And my deal breaker was cheating and domestic violence. You have no right to hit me. Welcome back to today's video. It's your girl Judith. So today we'll be filming a series on um, questions to ask before getting married. I had a DM from a subscriber. She asked if I could um, highlight um, some few questions that you could ask your partner to be able to understand if he's the one and to understand if you should pick the next step, which is marriage. And of course, I had to drop right on this and I had told her that I'll be filming this video soon. Yeah, so I have... Um, a few list of questions that I feel like from my experience I've been married for six years so I feel like these are very important questions that you could actually communicate with your partner before getting into marriage these are very essential and it will help to reduce a lot of friction whilst in the marriage so the first one is you want to um, know your partner's opinion on building a Christian home that is if you're a Christian so I'm speaking from my own point of perspective you want to know um, because you're going to be raising kids, right? So you want to know what approach are you going to take to make sure that you build some kind of structure in your home towards ensuring that your children toll in the path of God, toll towards um, a, a Christian-like life and all that. So what are those structures you're going to put in place? Um, what is um, visualization of what it would be and all that? So you just want to have that discussion with him. What are your expectations in marriage? You need to ask your spouse, what are their expectations in marriage? Because as we all know, we are different people and with different cultural backgrounds and all that. So you want to know the expectations in marriage. You can hear the person tell you that, um, I want a woman who would be a start home mom, who would be a homemaker, who would cook, who would take care of the kids. I don't want a working class this and that or you could hear I want just the woman who will support my dreams be there for me and as well live her life so based on your partner's answer you'll be able to if it works with your kind of person if you, if this is your kind of thing you want to be a stay at home mom and work from home and all that you could I think that that would be the perfect answer but if not you want to communicate that this is not your kind of person an ambitious person, your career driven person, and you wouldn't work well with being a stay at home mom. Yeah, then the next one you want to ask is what are your thoughts about a career driven woman? Um, because in our society, um, we can see a lot of friction going on about um, people fighting, and um, some men coming out and say, Oh, my wife will never work, my wife will never do this one, and all that. So, you want to communicate this, you want to, um, sort of like put out a question to your partner to see um, how they actually view a working class lady or a career driven woman if um, their perception about such women are like um, if the perception is good or if they have this kind of you know so you want to work with that and because you don't want to get into marriage with someone who doesn't support your dreams and all that it's going to be a power tussle because you will have kids you need to leave them probably after three months of maternity leave to get back to work and all that. Is he going to be okay with that? Or is he going to try to emotionally manipulate you into, oh, just had a baby, why would you leave a baby into the hands of a nanny, this and that? So you want to have this kind of discussions. And the next one is, you want to talk about your deal breakers. Um, before I got married with my spouse, um, we actually talked about our deal breakers and I specified boldly that my deal breaker was cheating and domestic violence you have no right to hit me and at no provocation should you raise your hands even if you don't hit me or should you even attempt then cheating it was a no no and he shared the same beliefs with me he was also he was also playing that cheating was a no no for him and domestic violence as well was a no no for him so it was a deal breaker for him so that way we made a pact then you want to talk about um how you approach decision making as a couple because um, many a times um, we have a lot of men who are brought up the traditional men. I, I'm calling it the traditional men in terms of like they were thought that you are the man, you should make all the decisions in the home, you should make sure you run everything. That once you allow a woman, it could come off as oh, she's controlling you, 
or you just have to do what she says or nothing will work and all that so you want to make sure your partner isn't um solely um acting upon um an archaic an archaic mentality you want to make sure he has a mind of his own and you want to make sure that he sees this as a partnership because the truth truth of the matter is that marriage is a partnership between two people two full-fledged adults who have their various lives who have their different backgrounds but who have decided to make it work so i believe that every single thing should be made every single decision should be made together as a couple even when it concerns your life you understand i know that when uh, it has to do with one party and concerning your personal private life of course you should have the um, upper hand in the show but what i mean is that at least seeking um your partner's consent even when you you've already made up your mind on what to do but you know just letting them know that i still value your consent as much as that i feel like i should do it this way right yeah so the next one is um do you want children and how many i've also seen this cause a lot of problems um for people that like i told you i want for now you're telling me you want just three so when we got married um before we got married um we discussed about the number of kids we wanted to have and i was saying five my husband said to just the girl and the boy and he's done and i kept pushing oh no 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 and all that but just like i'd always tell him marriage is about compromise so we came down to an agreement that okay he had to okay let's i'll do one more which is three i mean i had to come down from my five to three and but the truth of the matter is that experience they say is the best teacher after having the first child before i had my son now and with everything i had to go through through pregnancy i don't have an easy bet i just made up my mind that at the point i was like babe i think i'm just going to do two i don't think i can even do three my husband was like this this is the problem with women when i'm telling you he felt like i've seen that this is not an easy job and yeah but i might as well still do three but i'll just do two and then take a break before i'll have the third one probably yeah so um do you how do we manage our finances you want to talk about your finances if as a couple if you want to have a joint account and still have a separate account um i wouldn't really advise to have to strictly have a joint account like and not have your private account I wouldn't really advise it for couples to prevent a lot of problems and all that. I would advise you have your separate account. And if you still want to do a joint account, you can. And then talking about finances, how your day-to-day -day running of the house, the amount of money you guys want to be spending on um, grocery shopping, um, managing of the house, maintenance of the house, how much you want to set aside, how much you want to save, um, the investment you want to make. Do you want to invest in land or do you want to invest in um, all this building project or all this money, cryptocurrencies and all that? You just want to talk about and get each other's insight on finances. Yeah, because the truth of the matter is people would say um, if you have, um, people will tell you that um, Mar uh, money makes marriage um, sweeter, yeah. Because if you get into marriage with love and then you don't have money to finance a lot of things to take care of your bills, and then you're going to be frustrated, you're going to be at each other's throat, you're going to be at loggerheads. You understand? I'm not saying like marry for money, I'm just saying like marry someone comfortable that can take care of you whilst you both go for your dreams and chase the money together. Yeah, and the next thing you want to know about his thoughts on managing responsibilities and division of labor. I don't know how um i don't know how a lot of people do this but i'm grateful for support when it comes to running things in the house because i've heard a lot of people complain about how their spouse doesn't help out at all in the house and all that but most times i would usually tell them i feel like you should ask him right because um when i still work when i first began to work i would usually wake up at five and prepare myself for school, still go to work and still come back by six. Most times I'm doing a weekend shift in the hospital. And as much as we had a nanny, but my husband had to come to me. I was like, how would I help? And I said, oh, I feel like I, my strong point, my weakness is when it comes to washing clothes. As much as I have a washing machine, but I'm not really good at anything washing. Washing clothes. I can wash plates, but clothes is not my thing. So I was like, okay, you can help me washing um, our son's clothes while I do the rest. Of course, I can wake up preparing for school, prepare the meals. You don't even need to do anything as much. And then when we had our son, there were times when I would sleep and my husband would have to let me hold the child for some few hours. He would hold the child. We usually plan our shift, so I would hold the child from probably 12 to 3. And then he would continue. Then me, I will sleep from 3 to 5. That way, there's a balance. You understand? He didn't 
make me feel like oh we are the women we don't start to we have to carry each other and all that you understand so and then for some other women when your man is offering to help you're like no don't worry you can handle it at the at the beginning you might feel like oh this is small why can't i do this i don't need to trust my man yes you don't want to trust your man but at the long run it's going to catch up with you sometimes you need your man to come in for you step up for you and do things sometimes you need your man to be like oh don't worry i'll take the kids to the um, baby salon i'm going to get their hair done or oh, don't worry i'm going to cut their nails myself i'm going to do this like don't worry i can quickly um give them a bit or something like that because let's say for instance you even plan on relocating and your partner is not used to this it's going to be a struggle there and to him it's going to feel like some sort of punishment there because this is not something he's used to so that's that then the next one is um how do you handle conflicts and difficult conversations? I think this will tell you a lot about your partner because um, one thing that um, we did, one thing about me was that um, is that when I want to, I face my conflicts head on. I don't like to keep it aside. I just want to talk about it and get done with it. So my husband, he doesn't want to talk about it at all. Like he doesn't want. To, talk about it feels like oh you should just um for uh, for uh, overlook it and just uh, if you love me you should overlook it and but with time i made him understand that i can overlook those things especially when you're going to keep on repeating them and at the end of the day it's going to end up building up a resentment in my heart for you so we have to talk about it as much as you feel that conversation is and then i would always say like when we want to talk about issues um I feel like you want to listen to your partner's views on it because for me when for my marriage, I was like, I don't want us whenever we're fighting to have um have it in front of the kids in the parlor in front of anybody. We'd we'll always enter our separate rooms and then shout as much as you want, scream as much as you want, cry as much as you want. That's okay, that's our safe space. We don't want to um give off that energy to people, we don't want to see um we don't want to portray um that image to our kids because there are two ways about it. Their minds are just young they won't be able to actualize what is happening they may just pick up on the wrong sensation or the wrong energy and then grow with it too we just agree that we're going to have it in the room even if we want to shout it's going to be done in the room and all that and then of course whenever you start we, uh, um there's always this notion with couples that we don't go to bed angry but the truth of the matter i'm being very practical sometimes as you go for that marriage um most times it's not really um like I say, it's not really achievable because there are days where mm, i don't want us to talk about it like there are days where mm, mm, mm. like if you talk about this it's going to blow up so you may just leave it and go to bed and talk about it the next morning yes so you want to know um what are your different expectations when it comes to intimacy um because so many things could happen um the expectations we have for intimacy before entering marriage is quite different than when you're in marriage most times you're very exhausted from work if you're working and at that point you are not even thinking about intimacy you understand but the good thing about having such discussions is that that is where you strike a balance between what feels normal when we should know that this is going out of check but the truth is that there are seasons in marriage there are seasons where oh you're having it back to back there are seasons when mm, maybe once a month, maybe twice in a month, maybe three times, maybe four times, or even an instance. It's just depending on each couple, each to each their own. I don't know if I said it well, but like what I'm trying to say is that it's just depending on each individual or each couple. You understand me, bro? Intimacy, it shouldn't be something you place so much expectations on, but you also want to hear your partner share their lights on. That is where you want to know that, ah, why am I marrying? Is this someone I have to match their energy? And people will tell her, we must have this, this today and today must be like. And then you know that if this is your kind of person, you know, and if this could work, up, so that at the long run, it's not going to bring problems for you. Then the next one is you want to make sure, you want to know if your partner is a control freak or a supportive partner. This is very, very necessary. This is very necessary because um, a lot of traditional men love to be in control. They want to say what is done, even in your life, as regards their own, as regards your kids, everything. And most people may feel like, oh, I can manage this at first until you get into marriage, start having kids and start achieving other things. Then you see that this is not doable. 
you don't want to have a partner hotel you don't talk to this your friend don't don't go to this don't go to this place don't see your family you mustn't call anybody on phone unless i tell you to and you want to um i believe on under the period of dating you should be able to know if your partner is very supportive of you there are things that there's various ways your partner can so, so um support you some are good with affirmative words some are good with actions so it could be like, let, let me use YouTube for instance. It could be that, oh, it's such a YouTube channel. Your partner will be like, oh, babe, these are the ideas you could do. Oh, let's do this. Oh, this will blow up. I'm sure this will do. You can do this. Keep going. Even when you're not seeing the views, they could keep pushing you. Most of them could be like, oh, they could just surprise you with the gadgets you need to take your videos to another level. Maybe probably when they hear you complain about, oh, my video is bad, my audio is bad, they could just be like, oh, I could get this to my wife to support them. It could come in different ways. But the most important thing is to have a supportive partner and a kind partner every other thing is just going to be icing on the tea then you want to make sure you know your partner's religious preferences you want to understand their religious beliefs and all that the world down is um a very vast place a lot of things are happening a lot of things are going wrong some people go to church and still believe in the traditional way so as a christian it may not really sit well with you so you just want to know whom you're getting married to if spiritually you people align if your beliefs are every are, are the same thing if you need someone to hold in the gap of covering for you when you're down spiritually if you don't want to be spitting fire and the person is spitting cold so you want to just make sure that okay is it open to um because there's something about the journey with god also um he may actually want you to be in a particular place in a particular season to gain the experience um, that would lead you through a certain stage and when he's done he may want you to move on to move on to the next level is your partner someone that truly aligns with the direction of the holy spirit with the direction of god or is it someone that ah well i just say let's just go to church for going to church sake. you just want to know these things i know if it's something you can deal with yeah so guys i don't want this video to be too long i tell you to just pinpoint these few questions yeah um these i feel like if you have um at least if you touch up to 10 of these questions, it should give you some sort of insight on whom your partner is and how to navigate marriage with your partner. And if you should still go, go on with the marriage or if you should not go into it at all because you don't want to enter and be sorry. You don't want to, be, you don't want to enter and live in misery. So those are the points that I actually discussed um, with my partner, most of them. I tackled with my partner for entering marriage. So guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, share.